Hey guys, welcome back to Twitchy Plays Kerbal Space Program, where if you remember from last time, we had managed to leave Valentina the Kerman stranded in a very low orbit around the moon. So, Jeb, being the gallant chap that he is, has volunteered to go off and rescue her. Just a few issues with his ship though. I immediately reverted because uh, that was a little bit of a pilot error. I hadn't quite waited for my solid fuel to burn out completely before I staged, but for some reason, it still manages to smash up my vessel when doing so. So obviously a redesign is needed, new tweaks have to happen. Though it's quite nice to have a look around at the debris that's going on here and also Minmus in the background. We seem to be spotting it quite easily nowadays, but look at that cloud of debris. Isn't it amazing? Uh, the powered rockets in particular are ones that I, I like, just watching them zoom off whilst uh, our little vessel here uh, has this pol uh, ballistic trajectory just to go up and straight back down. After sitting through many, many hours of committee meetings and boardroom discussions, the Kerbal engineers have finally decided that well, possibly drogue parachutes are the way to go forward here so that when we jettison our solid boosters, uh, we can try to recover them later on if they actually manage to make it down to the surface. We are only sort of eight, maybe ten kilometres away from the surface here, and that physics bubble is actually quite large nowadays. Unfortunately, checking later tells me that no, they didn't make it. Up at the tippy top of our uh, lift burn here, you can see the majestic curvature of Kerbin beneath us, and we have just staged our last layer to be thrown away and i thought it might be nice to watch that particular layer crash down as there are four components to it they're all relatively close together and i thought it might be interesting to see what happens in the atmosphere as you can see already those two fins on top are aiding their their flight a little bit i know it's a bit hard with the way that i'm like shifting everything around but these two in particular stay really close to each other and it's really nice just to watch how they they interact with each other they have this majestic dance around each other in, in particular just at the top of these clouds here when they're all circling around i think it's absolutely beautiful unfortunately when we get down to the underneath of the clouds here it's a bit hard to spot them and i spend a little bit of time scuzzing around having a look but on this final view here if you can, if you look very closely off the horizon you can see two other tanks uh, unfortunately we lost one on the way down no idea where it went but there we go after that majestic display of the ballet of the atmosphere it's time to get back up into orbit and deal with Jebediah now Jebediah has never actually made it out to the moon before at least not on this save so he doesn't really know what he's supposed to be doing though he has got radio contact with Valentina who is talking him through the, pr the whole procedure she's like Jeb you need to go around until you can see the moon rising over the top of the horizon there you then just push your prograde until your apoapsis here comes up to about 10 and a half 11 million meters nice and easy to worry about if you have patched conics this will uh, be nicely displayed after you've done your staging of course because this is what happens when you run out of fuel uh yeah if you have patched conics once your your apoapsis gets up high enough you get this little weird orbital thing and you can see how much you have overshot the moon by and in this this case it was quite a lot so i wasted a little bit of fuel coming back down i wanted to be relatively close but not too close again i know i'm going to have a massive inclination change to do as you can see right here uh and i'm not really sure how i'm going to deal with that much like when Valentina first came to the moon didn't really know how to get onto that trajectory and once again I don't really know how I'm going to get onto that trajectory just kind of go out there may maybe aim for a high point again or maybe just do the maneuver as soon as I enter into manual space and after thinking about it I've gone yes I'm going to do the maneuver after I enter manual space of course, after making a decision like that and time warping your way a halfway over towards the Moon's sphere of influence, sometimes you realise that maybe, just maybe, the geometry is going to mess up the plan that you're trying to do. You'll see here that the angle that I'm entering the Moon's sphere of influence and where the orbit is that I need to actually go and get to is at about 90 degrees to each other. It's about as far off as you can be. So what I'm going to do now is try and get my periapsis out as close to the uh, far side of the Moon's sphere of influence as possible. That's just because it happens to be on that side of the moon so that when we make our 90 degree inclination change as i'm just placing the maneuver note down for here we are traveling as slow as possible so we can make greatest use of our delta v this is the way that inclination changes work if you have a big one to do make sure you're traveling slow before you do it that way you've got least um delta v to like overcome you're not traveling forward so far so you can turn right quite quickly all right at least that's the way it is in my head this is the way it's been explained to me and it seems quite good to me right so as we set the alarm clock we are going to warp to the said point now what we're going to do is use the Kerbal's new fang dangled warp to here thing as it seems to be the best way of doing so we can go through the sphere of influences without having to worry about it too much and that beautiful end of eclipse 
by Curb in there. I always do like the eclipses of uh, the of Kerbal by Curb in. Um, by far the best ones out there, especially when you're coming out to the moon. It's just a, a, a lovely, majestic thing to watch here. So, yes, we're going to do this warp using the Warp 2 feature of um, Kerbal Space Program, merely so that we can slow down when we're going through the sphere of influence. That, that is the main point here. Uh, and then we're just going to thrust for all we are worth. Uh, there, there is nothing really else we can do here. We're just trying to fulfill this, uh, this maneuver node here. Um, though, look at that view. What a view. It's, it's quite a quite something to to behold whilst undergoing this in inclination change here all right so we're starting to burn now it's only about half a kilometer of inclination to change or half a kilometer of delta v that is needed to change and i have checked double checked and triple checked that we're going into the orbit the right way around here to meet up with valentina so that's all good okay so i now set my my targeting so we can figure out where we are how close we're going to get like what we need to do to make sure our rendezvous goes well and all i need is that little red marker there as long as i can put that little red marker somewhere on an orbit that swap that crosses or somewhere on where the two orbits cross rather uh, i can then spend the next next orbit doing this nice little maneuver that i'm setting up now to make sure that our rendezvous is as close as possible when trying to set up for rendezvous i find it is a game of ever increasing precision so like what the first thing i had to do was make sure i was in the same pl uh, same planetary systems or at least in the same sphere of influence the next thing i had to do was to make sure that my inclination was at least lined up then i had to make sure that my rendezvous was getting a little bit close and i do mean a little bit close if we look at that marker there uh we will see that it's nowhere near zero zero kilometers it's probably Probably like 10 15 kilometers off anything less than 100 is good so that when we come around for the last one we can actually try and get even more exact but we are just wasting time now we are trying to wait for these uh, minutes to pass by before we make our maneuver node uh, we have about four minutes to wait and we are going through time at a relatively sedate pace uh, Jebediah is loving it this is the first time he's been to the moon and he's looking over that gray splendid wonder uh, taking everything in to bring back to Kerbin with him so that he can sell it like the PR machine that he is. And th this is what Jebediah really is all about. He is a PR machine. Okay, so we got ourselves lined up for the, the maneuver node and you'll notice that the first thing I did was get rid of it because it's not really all that useful. I'm trying to get down as close as possible whilst having these uh, maneuver, uh, not maneuver, these rendezvous marks as close as possible and this can all be done just by looking at the stuff on the map i don't need to actually set up anything on the maneuver node i just really wanted the maneuver node as a time marker somewhere to tell me right now is the time to look out and start doing things like that and so it was a wee bit of time acceleration later brings us one full orbit round and brings us into this close approach now this is amazing so using my targeting markers on the uh the nav ball there you'll see that what i'm trying to do is make my yellow one line up with my pink one and it's easy enough when we are looking towards our retrograde markers with this you just make sure that you are the other side of the yellow marker from the pink one give it a little push uh if you're looking towards your prograde it works the other way around you are giving the uh the prograde a little pull so make sure you're on the other side of the pink marker from the yellow uh it, it's fairly simple and then whenever they line up you know you're heading directly towards them now they will drift apart as you go around your orbit a little bit just because of the way orbits are set up but as long as you keep on top of it and just try and get yourself as close as possible before you completely know all your speed you will end up with a beautiful rendezvous working like this you end up with like zero speed relative to each other and then you can get valentina out which is of course what everything is about we're going to grab all the science data here and then try and spot jebediah somewhere now he is all the way over there now according to valentina that is below her but that is really really like awkward because that's not below that is like retrograde to our orbit we, we know this because this is the way that we approached so yeah no that was that was all all a bit strange a bit of a weird flight really uh, I, I didn't quite when i first got out with valentina i didn't quite understand which direction it was for jebediah and i had to spend a couple of seconds looking around trying to figure out what was going on with both kerbal safely in the pods mission control has actually got hold of them and gone actually jeb could you get into the secondary pod because valentina she has many many more hours of flight experience and can do many great things out there including looking towards retrograde and prograde which is what this particular return portion of the journey is all about we need to look prograde to get out of the moon sphere of influence and then we need to look retrograde to come back now you will notice that my inclination relative to the sort of the Kerbin moon um orbit stuff is well off it's it's quite hard to like try and figure out how i can make my 
make my orbit leave the moon sphere of influence on a nice direct retrograde marker. So what we're going to do is just push ourselves out of the moon sphere of influence and then try and figure out which way we're coming back. Obviously, if we just get ourselves out onto this um, gold orbit, I suppose is the, the, the best way to refer to it, we can then spend some time out in deep curb, curb in space trying to figure out the most efficient way to come home. And that, that's, that's relatively easy, uh, especially as we've already got ourselves on a trajectory outside of the moon sphere of influence. And look at that landscape underneath. I love the, the, the poles up here. It's just amazing to, to look at the landscape, how wrinkly, almost scrotal-like it is. It, it really just, it brings home really where we're on a different planet and, and things are just amazingly good and one thing i want to do is come up and make use of the uh the manula poles or any poles to be fair i would like to obviously with all the tourist contracts now i would like to actually put forward some sort of uh, space tourism company so that we can uh, have a, a small holiday villa out on the poles and possibly have uh, amusement parks and stuff like that i think that would be quite good so on our way out from the manual sphere of influence we're going to take a moment to say goodbye to the collins craft destined to always be floating around the moon now in this ultra low orbit at least until we get a, a a refuel mission out here maybe, maybe something good will come from this maybe not maybe it will be part of our new um manula station that we put up here as part of the tourism program i think i think that would be a very good idea to to have maybe use it as an up and down shuttle it might need retrofitting with some docking ports or stuff like that perhaps we can make actually a new vessel for that and then we'll just bring collins craft home but anyway we are now in position to be bringing our, our power apps down into kerbin's atmosphere and about 40 kilometers i think Think we've gone down deep enough in fact i i think we've gone down a little bit too deep but that that's going to be fine we're going to deal with that now all we have is the long lonely drift through the deep voids of space while jebediah and valentina get to know each other through the bulkhead between their two capsules they're like so how's it like being a bus driver jeb and he's like fuck off val next time i'm sending one of the engineers after you and then we can just like not speak to each other ever again now would that make you happy val would that make you happy and valentina's just like yes Yes, that would make me very happy. But anyway, here we are. We are down inside Kerbin's atmosphere. Uh, both of them are looking pretty happy, actually. Jeb looks a little bit more unsettled than Valentina. Valentina looks to be full on staring out the window. I mean, you can tell by the way the light is on her face, right? Uh, and everything seems to be going well. We are already down to 40 kilometers, though, and I'm starting to worry that maybe we've gone down too deep without sufficient heat shielding. Whilst we do have a heat shield, it is in between the fuel tank and the command capsules there. And for some reason, I haven't even jettisoned those yet uh well i know what the sum reason is the sum reason is that we have a little bit of fuel in there now i have noticed that my my um batteries are starting to warm up already and i've not had, had any heating effects and that, that's a little bit worrying mainly because it means i can't see what's going on now i know we're going to be getting some heating effects before we actually get the visual heating effects if you see what i mean that there, there, there is air interaction before the air becomes thick enough to see but that, that was worrying. But the other thing that is also worrying is the fact that we've gone well past our periaps now and are starting to go up back into orbit. Well, yeah, back into orbit, in fact. But that does give us a chance to get out and have a look around, um, push our craft around into you know, a, um, a solar collecting position. This was something that didn't quite happen on our way back from the moon, which meant that when we got into the atmosphere, I couldn't turn us around. And that was the real reason why we didn't actually have... Uh, ourselves pointed in the right direction while we kept hold of all the stuff in the vain hope that the, the heavy engine would actually pull itself in front of the command capsules and stuff of like that because of all like the weird atmospheric drag and stuff didn't quite happen as i was expecting it to happen but that, that's good enough all right so we're going to stare at stare at retrograde now well i say stare at retrograde we're going to look at retrograde and then we're going to put on stability assist and then we're going to look at roughly where i think retrograde is going to be when we hit the atmosphere and here we go entering the atmosphere uh once again jeb and valentina seem to be loving it i mean the, the the shakes must be getting quite real now the the vibrations that set up from sort of aero braking I, I should imagine are quite intense so it's not a it's not a uniformly smooth thing is there it's, it's full of lumps and bumps and waves and high pressure areas and low pressure areas and hitting those must give differences especially given the level of weather that can be inferred from the number of clouds that are now in Kerbin's atmosphere I mean that must be quite intense especially going through some sort of storm cloud or something like that I mean the pressure inside those things is just so variable it must be like hitting a wall at times but anyway you'll notice that I got rid of all my fuel but this was because I'd realized that we we're going over the top of our periapsis and th this is bad 
bad. Like going around for a third orbit bad. So the one thing I did manage to do was click on my periapsis and do the whole warp to here point. The thing I didn't realise that would do is that it would put me on... Um, physics warp as opposed to like space warp i don't even know what to call this like time acceleration versus physics acceleration well i suppose i just named it there didn't i this time acceleration and physics acceleration so doing the warp two when i'm inside the atmosphere will only ever max out on the physics acceleration and will not swap to time acceleration even when it comes out into orbit which is something to take note of i should imagine all right so we made some staging here and the one thing i'm really worried about is that engine nacelle coming back and smashing me in the underside there but thankfully everything went on, went on right I, I must have done a separation a little bit off of pure retrograde or pure prograde and managed to push the tank down and us up a little bit which gave us a separation which is what it is all about here though to be frankly honest i'm never sure what is the best way to decelerate i mean do i want a large craft that will catch as much air as possible to slow me down or do i want a light craft so that the air that does catch has maximum input impact uh yeah I, I don't know answers on a postcard or perhaps down in the comments down below that would be great uh anyone who wants to find out that out would be great uh if nothing actually does happen maybe i'll do a video for it if someone's like hey you should do this then maybe i will do that okay so we're gonna have a quick stare at our retrograde there just to make sure that our heat shielding is fully fully in the way occluding all our parts as this is what they're they're there to do though i do note that our batteries whilst completely underneath the heat shield literally i could not get them any closer to being protected by that heat shield you can see right there are still the first things to take heat damage and that, that, that annoys me a little bit because i'm like well what am i supposed to do to protect these um these sensitive parts i know i'm supposed to put them in a service bay but surely a heat shield should be good enough surely i mean like does the plasma roll around the edge of that heat shield and get into that little concave bit there i mean how does that happen how does that ha happen Should i mean i know there's going to be a sort of a uh vacuum eddy if you will where they're, they're where stuff wants to be but surely the air there is going to be shielded from the shock all around it and it's just going to like make a pref pressure differential that will keep everything separate surely surely well anyway we are coming down through the atmosphere we're about 45 kilometers up it's quite still quite high but we are shedding speed like no one's business while we are still traveling at close to oh is that 2000 uh, two kilometers i think yeah while we're traveling at two and a half kilometers we are coming down into thicker and thicker atmosphere and and this is what it's all about no longer it does our apoapsis extend be above the atmosphere we are in no danger of going around for a fourth orbit this is this is amazing what we are in danger of is exploding but this is kerbal space program and the threat of explosion is an ever present one uh, whether we be on the launch pad in the atmosphere up in space what running around on a rover even just doing backflips on the moon chances of explosions are pretty high okay so we're coming down quite hard through the atmosphere now finally made it below that 30 kilometer mark so we can start seeing some real light shows here uh, the mountains in the background snow peaked glistening with the cities down below I, I think it's amazing we are about to lose our solar panels though and that could be a little bit disastrous because obviously we need the power to be able to hold ourselves on target but i think everything's all right i think our two previous orbits at a higher altitude have made us lose enough speed that we can actually come back down without actually any threat of explosion well there is the threat of explosion without actually exploding any parts we're now down below 10 kilometers coming down pretty hard pop the parachute of course the one thing that i'm actually really having to uh, to struggle with to make sure now is that i, I pop my parachutes early enough because obviously with the earlier versions of kerbal space program you can pop your parachutes at 500 meters and be fine but if you do that nowadays it's going to take so long for your parachutes to open that you're going to slam into the floor at quite a rate of knots so i try to keep mine open at about two kilometers now uh so we are down less than a kilometer off the floor we're a kilometer off sea level and we can see mountains everywhere around us so who knows what's going to happen we're going to touch the floor long before that reaches zero uh, and with that in mind i'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this rescue mission guys we're going to do some dancing on the way down here but you can rest assured that these two are going to make it down safe and sound with four meters per second to go i'm going to see you next time when we're going to do a lot of contracts and stuff and i'll see you then when we're going to do that bye